Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to change or transition rooms in your game using just one object, and it is a very simple method. It's going to look something like this. You're going to have a player object that you can move around, and a warp object that when you hit it, you will transition rooms and go to a new location. And then when you hit that warp object again, you'll go to a different room. So I'm using one object that we are going to programmatically tell how and where to put the player each time they run into it. It's super simple and it's super fast. Let's just jump right into it. Now if you want to do this follow along and just use those simple sprites, make them on your own, go ahead. If you'd like to use a little more complex sprites, you can download this project. I've got Sarah here along with an object of Sarah that has her step code already set up. If you're interested in looking at that, follow the card to my import and animating sprites tutorial and you can learn from there. The first thing we're going to do is create a new sprite and we're going to name it SPR wall and we're going to come in and all we're going to do is fill it with black. It's just going to be a simple black wall. I am not an artist. Uh, we are going to center this by going middle center. We're going to exit out of it and create a new object called OBJ wall. And we're going to assign it that sprite. We're going to set it to solid. We're going to come into Sarah, set her to solid, and add an event of a collision with the wall. We don't need to do anything with it. That's just so that she'll actually run into the wall. It'll look nicer that way. Now let's load up our room. By default, the black the background is black. If you want to change that, you can click on background and change the color here. Just make sure you're on the instances tab. And we are going to drag in this wall. We're going to put it here in the corner. And by holding down Alt, I can make another one appear. And then I can drag and click and create as many instances of these as I want. So all I'm going to do is make a border around the room. And I'm going to make two right here and put Sarah inside of this room as well. So now we have the first room that she can move around in. The last thing we need is actually just one more sprite. We're gonna call this OBJ or SPR warp. We're gonna come in here and I'm just gonna put some text. Let's fill it with nice purple text. First we'll fill with like a gray color. Ooh, with a gray color. And we'll come in here and we'll put some text in here that says warp. And that's all we really need. It's super simple. Uh, we'll go back to here, we'll put middle center, just because I like to center everything. And we'll make an object, obj warp. We're going to assign it this sprite. And in your game, you would make it so it's not visible. For here though, I'm going to keep it visible so that you can actually see it and that you know when you're running into it and such. Then we're going to add an event. We're going to add a collision event with OBJ Sarah. And this collision event is going to say where to put the player. But first we're going to add one more event and it's going to be the create event. And inside of here, we're actually just going to create a couple of variables. So we're going to say var target room target x and target Y. And that's all we need. These are just local quick variables that only need to be accessed once. Then we're going to go into the collision event with Sarah. Now the way this works is that when the room is created, you are going to say warp object, this is where your destination goes to. So all we have to do is set up the code in here for it to know how to do that. So we're going to use the function room go to target room obj sarah dot x equals target x and obj sarah dot y equals target y. So we'll save that and then these will turn blue because they are variables that we are using over here. So now what we need to do is go in and make one more room and again let's change the background. This way we know it's different. Let's do like a nice blue background. And we're going to make, we're going to put in some walls in here. So I go back to instances. And just so that, you know, you know it's a different room, let's do kind of a weird wall formation. Okay. And we'll have the player come out 
over here. So we're going to take this warp, we're going to place it right there. And we're also going to go into the first room, and we're going to place the warp right here. Now, this is how this whole thing works. There is a thing called creation code. For every instance, every object in your room, you can have the room actually tell it to do something when the room gets created. And so what we want to do is double click on our OBJ warp, and that brings up its instance code. And we can actually go into creation code here, and this is where we alter it. So we're going to say, because we are right now in room one, that's the tab we're in, so we're going to say target room, we're going to assign this variable equal to room one. And we're going to say target x, well for that we need to actually go into room one, and we need to look and see what x and y coordinates are here. So for safety, uh, let's, we're going to say x is 380, and y is 150. So 380, 150. So let's save that and run it. That's just the very first object warp, but you'll get the idea here very quickly. So we can move around, and if we hit this warp, well, she's not persistent. So let's go into Object Sarah, click Persistent, and run again. That can be a problem as well if you forget to do that. Not clicking persistent means that she won't appear in the next room. But if we do this, we hit the warp, we go into here. Now this warp is going to give us an error because we haven't set up target room variable. That's a way to quickly and easily know if it's working correctly. If you haven't set it up, it's going to throw an error. But if we come into room 1, we double click on this, go into creation code, and we say target room equals room 1 target x equals something and target y equals something. So let's go and take a look over here. And the x and y coordinates, if you can't tell, are right here, these numbers that keep moving. So that's what I'm looking at. And you want to make sure that you're far enough away that it, Sarah is not hitting this warp when she comes in. If she's hitting that warp when she comes in, she will automatically fly back to the other room and it will appear that your warp isn't working properly which is why you always want to have them appear a little ways away or put the warp on a cooldown, say like two to three seconds after they hit the warp, they can't go back into another warp. That would be something a little more advanced that you can do, but here we're just gonna make sure she's placed far enough away. So this looks about 835 and 418. That's what we're gonna say. 835 and 418. We're going to click run, and now we're going to have a game with changing rooms super easy. So we hit this warp, we're in this room. We hit this warp, we're in this room. One object, all you do is alter the creation code. It's super simple, super easy to set up, and it allows you to be really flexible because once you know how to work this, you can add a lot more variables in if you wanted to. Now, just to show you that this looks a lot better than it actually does. We'll take off the visible variable for the warp, and then we just hit this and we warp. Same thing still activates. Doesn't have to be visible for the player just to change rooms. So I hope that you found that helpful. If there's any tutorials or anything that you'd like me to cover in the future, please leave a comment below. Hit me up on Twitter. I am active and always looking for new ideas. If you'd also like to vote on what I create next, Support me on Patreon, I put out polls on there that you can influence the content that I make. As always though, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. Hey there, uh, I've got a Patreon, if you didn't know. If you'd like to support me, that would be great. Up on the screen are the people who are pledging enough to get their name in the credits. They are helping fund this YouTube channel, which is awesome. I just want to give a shout out to them and all that they do to help me do this. It's great. If you would like to join, uh, you can click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thank you.